as a creative artist, I've been uh, pursuing for a long time the idea that creative decisions that we artists make um, are not entirely intuitive, that they are, um, there's some process involved. It's, it's been a long, ongoing project, and uh, recently I've started working with Philippe Pasquier from SIET. What I was doing in the academic world, which I am still doing, is I'm a computer scientist, I'm a specialist of cognitive sciences, and I do artificial intelligence in my discipline. Seeing if computers can be creative. Which is to undo a machine not with intelligent behavior, but with creative behavior. And playing music is, composing music is such a behavior. Applying um, artificial intelligence ideas into uh, making computers creative, which is the, uh, there's a term for that now called meta-creation. I call meta-creation because then you create as yourself as a creator, uh, as a computer scientist, or as an artist, you create a machine that will create. It's the idea of endowing uh, creative possibilities within the computer. So the, the project is called uh, Musical Meta Creation, Creative Software and Software Creativity. So I'm looking at the, 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 the possibility of encoding those uh, ideas into software. And so we're going to develop, in particular, one uh, model of a musical agent. So that is an artificial piece of software that can listen to sound, can recognize the uh, rhythm of the notion of time, can recognize the harmony, the harmonics and uh, comp the pitch of the sounds. The computer is actually way better than me in doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and that can act. So can perceive the world by listening and can act by uh, playing sounds or playing uh, a virtual instrument. And internally, these agents will follow what we call a cognitive architecture. In other words, it will implement models from cognitive science that cognitive science have, um, and theories about how humans are perceiving and playing uh, music. And so by doing so, we, we try to have an agent that will be nice and fun to play with in a live concert, for example. And at the same time, we are doing a kind of validation for those cognitive scientists. And, and we're gonna do both the scientific part of the research with scientific publications in journals and conferences uh, of music cognition and music perception, of computer music, and of uh, computational creativity and artificial intelligence and machine learning. But we're also gonna do the artistic part where we're gonna have, and that hopefully gonna give us quite a bit of visibility, we're gonna have composition made by the system, played by orchestra, or some of those artificial agents playing live with some uh, musicians. We eventually gonna have deploy some systems online. It's yet to be determined exactly what's gonna happen, but we, we're gonna do artistic projects as well. We recently got a NSERC Canada Council grant, which uh, is gonna support our research for three years. This particular grant, the wonderful thing about it is it's a combination between SHRC, or sorry, between NSERC which is uh, you know, scientific research, and the Canada Council, which is artistic um, production. And uh, previously it's always been both of us doing, doing the work. There's only limited time that we have to, to do it. So now we can actually hire students um, to, to do a lot of this work with us and sort of guide them in their own research towards what we're doing. I give a course called Meta Creation where I look at not musical creation only, but the, the past, uh, all the techniques and strategies and models that have been used to undo machine with creativity, because there's already a lot of applications in architecture, in, like in a lot of domains, machines are creating things. So I teach this course, which is looking at those techniques in details, and Arne was sitting in the course, he audited the course. One of his classes was called Meta Creation, and so I thought, and one of my uh, graduate students was taking the class, and it sounded exactly like what I was interested in, so I sat in on the class and uh, we just started chatting more and more and just realized our research interests were uh, so similar that we both wanted to pursue this and uh, we just came up with this long-term project and yeah, it's, it's very exciting that we, we can now really pursue it. Uh, 
so of course what happens is when as a faculty you sit into another faculty's graduate course then you get to know a lot about the research that he is doing mm -hmm. and by listening you know you, you get inspired and you like uh, there's a synergy with your own research you're like oh but you know he has this problem and i know how to do that or the reverse you know it's like mm -hmm. oh i got this problem and that's a solution for me mm -hmm. you know, and then you do a knowledge transfer and then that's extremely rich Artists are going to be replaced by machines. I mean, that's always the fear of yes, technophobia. Yes, it's an age-old right? concern. Yeah, but but in fact, it's never happening. It, it never happens like that. It's always it's going to push uh, artists somewhere else, and uh, and that's usually great um, as well. Yeah, I think there's there's a tendency often uh, to be very territorial that us in contemporary art are saying, oh, they should keep their hands off of art because well, that's what we do. Mm. Um, but they're approaching things from a different point of view, and I think it's instead of saying, keep away from our stuff, we should say, well, let's get together and let's uh, see what can happen. And there's a, there's a number of faculty I know that are very, very interested in this cross-cultural, if you will, uh, development and see what happens when we all get together. And we have working artists that are creating art, and, um, and of course we're teaching it as well, but one of the things that um, working with scientists is that scientists explain everything that they do. You know, everything that they, all of their thought process is revealed in their research work, in, in the papers that they have to publish. For artists, we simply present our final product. And there's usually, uh, there's sort of an aesthetic discussion about it, but very little um, discussion on how we uh, did it. Um, there are no sort of research papers in that scientific regard on, on explanations on how it was done. You know. um, that we don't tend to talk a lot about that because you know we say there's the, the artistic gift you know that uh, someone is very artistic. What does what does that actually mean? And I think that uh, so I see one of the responsibilities that I'd like to take on is um, to, to leave some sort of a, a description of this of what we're doing what I'm doing and what uh, and for others can follow. So if somebody's interested in the work that I'm doing, that they don't simply, they're not simply left with the artwork, that they're left with a lot of the, um, uh, the pursuit that led to the artwork, you know, that there's a lot of description. So um, working with Philippe, that I'm, I've actually written a lot of papers now uh, on the artwork itself, and Philippe says there's so little of that out there, that if the, of artists writing about their art, rather than just letting the art speak for themselves. So that the mentality that the scientific community has of this um, documentation is uh, something that we don't have in the artistic community. And I think that, uh, p particularly in a university environment, I think that is a responsibility that we should take on. That we, we, I don't think we have the luxury of just saying, let our art speak for ourselves, because we are in a university and we should leave some sort of documentation of how and what we've done. And, and that, that has been, I think, um, one of the uh, sort of uh, an enlightenment that I felt in working within this department where we're together, artists with scientists and uh, social scientists. I think it's that's one of the exciting aspects. I think there's so many possibilities with um, this new faculty in, in uh, the, the rubbing of shoulders of uh, just that we're approaching things from different points of view. And I think it's so healthy for uh, the, the faculty and the research that we pursue that we can do things together. But uh, now that the students are, it's, it's easy for students to take classes that I'm teaching a class now where I have a number of CS students and, uh, and the, the contemporary art students. And it just they approach things from completely different points of view. And it's mm -hmm. so healthy to get them together to, to do that. So it's. Uh, so just as the faculty hopefully is, is, is doing things that they may not have done previously, that the students as well will, uh, will, will accomplish and achieve things that they may not have done otherwise.